My name's Mayon and in this video I want to talk about my experience with binge eating and some things that I learned and hopefully some things that can help you. Binge eating has a lot of shame and guilt around it, but it's actually kind of a symptom to an underlying cause. You know, lots of people want to shame people for eating a lot, shame larger people and that sort of thing. And, you know, on the other spectrum, there's like people with anorexia who don't eat a lot and they get a little bit more sympathy. But still, you know, they're both kind of bad things and they have problems and they come from similar kind of places. Just they're using different kind of methods. One's causing pain on yourself, one's trying to cause pleasure on yourself, like to overindulge. And with binge eating, I think I think of the quote from Kung Fu Panda. I eat because I'm sad and I'm sad because I eat. And it just creates this kind of vicious cycle. And I've experienced both sides. I've starved myself before and tried to eat as little as possible. But also um, in the last year, I have experienced binge eating, which is something that I never kind of thought I would experience. And I just want to kind of talk about this because growing up, I was fairly healthy, but there were some symptoms that I had a chance to use behaviours in excessive kind of ways. Um, and this started because last year, at the start of the year, I, mo I moved out for the first time and I moved out to go to uni. I didn't really want to do uni, but I was doing it because I wanted to do a soccer program out there. And I was going to a city where I didn't know anyone and you know, I just kind of thought, oh yeah, I just kind of get along, I'll be fine, that sort of thing, I'll find people that I like. But I kind of realised that, you know, I wasn't really like a lot of the people up there and I struggled to find anyone that I really connected with. And I'm not that much of a social kind of extrovert and I find it hard to get along with a lot of my peers. And this kind of left me feeling kind of sad and quite lonely and as well as that, I was doing this soccer program and I was also playing soccer and I was doing as much soccer as I had ever done and I was pushing myself quite hard and these pressures kind of built. And this is the first, one of the first points that I want to make is that binge eating has a source. It's not just some sort of symptom like, oh, you binge eat, you should stop. It's like it comes from something. There's some sort of stress, there's some sort of overwhelm that is creating this need in you to kind of bring yourself back into homeostasis. That's what the body's trying to do. Since you're experiencing this high stress, your body wants to bring it back to homeostasis, back to its set point where it feels balanced and comfortable. And so this could be anything. Like for me, it was not having many friends. It was feeling lonely. It was being all by myself, not being in the best and most uncomfortable comfortable environment. It was doing uni work that I didn't really want to do, going to classes that I didn't want to go to for several hours. If you've ever been to a uni lecture, you know what they can be like. And on top of that, I was playing more soccer than I ever had. And, you know, all of this stress kind of built up something that my body needed something to kind of release and get rid of. And another point that I want to make with this is that it's easy to feel guilty and shameful about yourself and create all this negative cycle. But as Kung Fu Panda said, you know, I meet when I'm sad and I'm sad because I eat. This just creates a more vicious kind of cycle. And if you kind of take a step back and realize where this could come from, where the source can kind of come from, you can have more compassion and be kind for yourself and see things holistically rather than getting a one set view and shaming yourself or other people for eating to the extreme. Now, some of you might be wondering what kind of binge eating I did, how, like what I ate, how much I ate and that kind of thing. And although it sounds kind of weird to say, I think it has a valid point and I would want to know this too, to help me get out of it. At the start, it wasn't very big. It wasn't crazy, you know. I was kind of living by myself, so I was just kind of eating what was easiest. And a lot of this was just kind of those nut kind of bars and that sort of thing, or the, and having toast. And you might say, oh, well, these things don't sound too bad. You know, they're, they're kind of fine. But like, I got to the point where I would eat almost a whole loaf of bread and I was eating, I got up to eating maybe two or three packs of the bars in a day or even less. And you know, it's not a very nice feeling when you feel out of control with yourself, when you feel so stressed and that's the only way that you can get some sort of solace and some sort of comfort in your life. 
And so these, <laughs> these bars may not sound that bad, but you know, they had quite a bit of sugar in them. They were coated in chocolate and that sort of thing. And at the start, you know, I said I was eating it maybe a pack a day at the start, and then it got up to maybe two or three. And these bars had maybe five or six in them, but then I was getting ones that had 12 in them. And I remember one day we had a, a nutritionist and she did one-on-ones with us. And I told her, you know, I think I'm overeating with sugar. And she's like, oh, what do you mean by sugar? Like, I don't think it's sugar. I think it's like the food and the satiety in it. And, you know, you're also playing quite a bit of sports. So like your body needs quite a bit. And when I told her that, she was like, oh, so what do you eat? How much do you eat? And I was like, oh, bars. And she's like, oh, you mean like those nut bars? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, they're not that bad. But then when I told her that I was eating a whole box, she was, she was like, really, she kind of looked shocked. And I was like, oh, I, she thinks it's bad to eat one box. How bad would she think if I was eating two or three, which I had been? And, you know, that was me. I was conscious of it. And I was trying to open up about it, but I couldn't quite, I wasn't seeing the nutritionist often. And, you know, I'm not sure. She tried to help in a way that she can, but, you know, I didn't have much friends or support or anything to do anything. And the reason why I didn't eat much ice cream or lollies was because I had this idea around myself that I was this healthy person. That's kind of how I grew up. You know, I was a soccer player. Soccer players are super healthy. They're athletes. We have to perform. We can't binge eat. We can't over consume or else we'll be gaining too much weight and we'll have too much fat. We'll feel slower. We won't have enough energy, yada, yada, yada. And so I also had a lot of shame and guilt just going into the store and buying these sorts of things even like a couple packs of the bars, I kind of felt guilty about it. And I was like looking around and feeling very uncomfortable in it. But eventually I would go in on weekdays in the mornings where there'd be barely any people in there. And then, you know, I'd start getting more ice creams, I'd start getting more lollies. And I'd eat some and then I'd tell myself I could stop and then I'd just keep eating and eating and eating. And I would spend so much that I wouldn't have any money left for a week. And that's and that's just so stupid, you know, because I could have saved that money. I could have used it for other things, but instead I was just spending it on <laughs> gratifying myself and trying to feel okay when I didn't feel okay. And the most extreme that I got to was I would order Hungry Jacks because, as I said, I didn't feel very comfortable going out to it. And also because of what I was ordering. So at the start, I'd just order, order like a couple burgers and maybe some chips and a soft drink and maybe a sundae. And I had that one or two times. And then I realized it'd save me more money if I would spend it on a family pack. And <laughs> this consists of four burgers, four packs of chips, four, um, 10 nuggets and four soft drinks. And I would order it and I would sit, sit in my room and kind of hide and be very anxious about it. And you know, some of them, some of the drivers would call you off and ask, Oh, are you here? You know, can I leave it at your door? And some of them would just leave it and go. And sometimes I'd have to go out and meet them. And I hated that. You know, because, you know, of course they wouldn't be able to see from their perspective, like what I was doing or if I was sharing it with other people, but you know, I knew and I felt unco very uncomfortable with that. And I wouldn't just, I wouldn't just eat it like over a couple of days. I would eat all of it in a sitting. I'd eat and I'd eat and then I'd swap and change and drink and, you know, to get mo the most pleasure out of it. And I would eat till I felt full and then I'd keep eating and I'd almost feel sick. I did feel sick, but I never actually spew. But on top of that, I was, <laughs> I was playing, I was playing a lot of Hearthstone. I was playing other kind of video games. I was Call of Duty Mobile and I was, watching a lot of movies and watching TV shows and all that while I was doing this. And it was just a very tough time in my life. And I didn't have any other way to cope with it than that. 
and I tried going on walks. I tried listening to more talks and tried taking care of myself and listening to these podcasts. But since I had so much stress, my body wanted to come back to normal and I wasn't enjoying the kind of things that I was doing and that I had to do. So it kind of brought me back and I gained about five kilos in a bit over a month, which is quite a lot. And I had never gained a super amount of weight before. You know, I tried a little bit whilst gaining muscle, but I never gained it like this that fast. And I'm someone who's very skinny, has a high metabolism. You know, I'd never thought that I'd be a binge eater or that I would be able to gain weight like that. And you may look at me and think, oh, you're really skinny. What have you got to know about this? But like, you know, five kilos is a lot. And I had always been very skinny. I'd always been able to see my abs, you know, no matter what. And for the first time I had a bulge, I had a belly, you know, and I had a gut. And that was kind of a shock. And eventually I realized I needed to get out of this environment. I needed, this wasn't working for me. I needed to change. I needed to come back and just sort my shit out. And I learned that, you know, change is really slow. It wasn't a smooth journey back to eating healthy and, you know, feeling great and all this kind of thing. But for a while, you know, I still binge ate when I was coming back and transitioning back. And that happened for a while. And then I tried to go an extreme kind of health kind of kicks, you know, where I tried to change it all. And it was just kind of a compensation, you know, because I felt so bad and so guilty that I tried to change it all. And this is how I learnt, and this is why I talk about, you know, when you build habits, start easy, start with what's enjoyable. You know, lower your stress, pick things that are going to give you less stress, or if they do give you stress, pick things that give you the stress that you want or that you could handle, and don't go too far into extreme, you know. I was doing uni that I didn't want to do, I was doing soccer more than I had ever done, I was taking on much more than I ever could, uh, than I could handle. And I didn't have any friends or anything to share it with or anything to kind of help me get through that. And this is also important for doing things that you enjoy, because if you don't enjoy eating healthy, if you don't enjoy the feeling of feeling healthy in yourself and taking care of yourself and the satisfaction that that brings to you and the duty that you have for taking care of your body, then you're not going to continue this. You're not going to make it a lifestyle. And... Another important thing is also to think long term, you know, don't, don't just think like, oh, I should be eating healthy now, I should be doing it now, now, these kind of things. Just forget these shoulds and just start slow and kind of build up because it took me a long time to kind of come back to eating healthy and having a better relationship with my food. And even now I'm not eating health, I'm not eating perfectly. I'm eating quite healthy, I'm eating fairly good, but I'm just trying to change it bit by bit and find the things that stress me out and that cause me too much stress and too much anxiousness that kind of push me too far and just kind of tone it back a little bit. But we do need some stress, you know, we do need to kind of edge out of our comfort zone. Otherwise, we're just going to live the kind of comfortable life and just bullshit ourselves into a life that really isn't worth living. That's just going to coast through and you're not going to feel very proud or very satisfied at the end of it. So I hope my story helped you. I hope this kind of gave you some points that could help you see this in a bigger way because this would have really helped me when I was going through that. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.